Hi everybody, this will be part 22 in the character rigging tutorial series. This video we'll discuss how to uh, start setting up the controls for our bipedal uh, male model character that we've been using for this tutorial series. So previously we have created all of the joints for our character and we have also set up the skin weights for our entire character as well. Uh, so we're making sure that the body does move properly when the right joints rotate. Now one thing I'll also say is that uh, the skinning process doesn't end. Once you start creating the controls you will probably realize that some body parts may move a little bit too much once you start creating the controls and be able to see how the character needs to animate. So before we rig the character we need to think about a couple of major things. Uh, the first one is how is the character going to animate? What does the character need to do? Uh, so we need to think about the major motions the character needs to go through and that would drive how we create the controls. Uh, and then uh, we need to figure out well, what is the purpose of this animation? Where is it going to be seen? Who is it going to be seen by? What is it for? So is the, the character just going to be visible or seen from a Maya rendered scene just within the Maya software? Uh, that's important to know. Or is the character going to be sent to a game engine? Uh, so that's going to be really important as far as how we are going to set up the controls. So for most characters, we're going to think about the major actions. And most characters are going to have a standing idle action, a walking action, a running action, a jumping action. Um, and then it, then it would depend on the purpose and the goal of why we're creating this character to determine what else the character might need to do. Uh, so th this... Uh, character we've been going through this whole process for setting this up for a game engine uh, so we need to think about other specific actions that this character might need to do so maybe this character needs to do a backflip or needs to do a cartwheel or uh, needs to crab walk on all fours or walk um, leaning forward on all fours like a, a quadruped or something like that uh, or maybe the character needs to have a punching kicking fighting actions does the character need to have a death action a tired action does the character need to speak and talk or show emotion uh, with facial features? Uh, does the character need to deform in an unnatural way for some reason, like the body is bloating out or shrinking in or stretching in specific ways? That's kind of the st starting point where we need to understand how the character needs to be set up for motion. So uh, a couple of the things we need to think about is, is where is this going to go? Is this just going to stay in Maya or is it going to go to another software? And that's going to be really important how we create the controls. One thing we can do is come in here and actually just select the individual joints and start keyframing them. So if I come in here, we can create animation by just selecting a joint, going to the timeline, rotating that joint, and starting creating animation individually here. So maybe after uh, frame 30, then the elbow will start to rotate. So that way you can start to see some motion happen with individual joints. Um, so we could do the same thing with the other arm, come in here, 30 frames, that arm's going to go down as well. Another 30 frames, the elbow's going to rotate, whatever we might want to do with the arms there. Whoop, didn't create a base keyframe there. Let's go back to the elbow, create a base keyframe, rolling that forward. There we go. So how does this character need to animate? So you can animate the individual joints, and that's completely fine. Uh, but there are going to be some actions that are just not going to be plausible if we just animate the joints. So what about the character walking? So maybe after those 60 frames, we want the character to walk. So we're going to say keyframe, the character's leg, you know, stepping forward, and then kind of rotating back. Okay. So we can start to get some somewhat walking motion, but it's not going to look very natural because what we need to do is have a stepping where the foot's planting down, the torso would then go down. Um, so whenever we need motion that is going to use a force applied against one of the body parts, we it's very hard and difficult for us to do that in an efficient way with just the joints. So here's where the use of inverse kinematics and curve controls can come into play to help create a more natural and believable motion and make the animator's job easier to create that motion uh, instead of just animating joints. 
Uh, so one also thing to note about creating uh, animation for game engines is that the only thing that ever gets exported and imported into a game engine is the geometry and the joints. That's it. So this other stuff that we're creating for controls to be able to animate easier and more naturally uh, is only for the animation standpoint. These curve controls, the IKs and other elements that we're going to create uh, cannot get exported into game engines. So what that means is the animation is going to be created on the controls. The controls drive the motion of the joints. The joints drive the motion of the geometry. Um, but when we're ready to export for a game engine, we have to what's called bake the animation from the controls to the joints. So that way when we're ready to export, just the joints now have the geometry or geometry moving and the animation is on the joints. But from an animator standpoint, the controls make it easier for us to animate. So that's something else we need to understand when we are creating animations for game engines is that just the joints in the geometry get exported. These controls are meant for the animator, not for in-game use. All right, so that'll wrap up this video as far as talking about an overview of what to think about before creating controls. The next video, we'll go ahead and create some inverse kinematics and controls for uh, the body and get started with rigging the character.